These are squash shoes and getting the right shoes is really important because they will help you move better and they will help you avoid injuries, which we'll come on to in a moment. The two main characteristics of squash shoes that are important are one, the type of sole. The sole is designed specifically to react well with the type of floor that you will play on. In addition, they're generally called non-marking and you only need to go to any leisure center and look at the floor of a squash court and see all of these blue and dark lines. Those are shoes that are not designed for indoor court and they make a mark. That's less important than the fact that this type of material will help you grip the floor in the correct way. The second feature about squash shoes is that they are designed for lateral movement. They have support on the inner and outer parts of the foot because when you're playing, you're often twisting and going forwards and backwards and all sorts of things. And that's really important. In addition to squash shoes, you could buy volleyball shoes, badminton shoes, and handball shoes. Those types of shoes are all suitable for use on a squash court. The main difference that I can see between badminton shoes and squash shoes is generally, or sometimes, badminton shoes are lighter. And um, that's maybe because they have to do a little bit more jumping, or maybe that's just the way it is. Now, the shoes that you shouldn't use, shouldn't use are tennis shoes, basketball shoes, and CrossFit shoes. Those shoes are not designed for indoor courts and they're not the same kind of movement. The shoes that you must not use, and I need to stress this, you must not use running shoes. And for two reasons. The first reason is that running shoes are raised at the back because when you're moving, most of the movement is just this forward motion. So they're raised to protect your heels. The problem for squash players is that you might then twist your ankle. And obviously that's not what you want to do when you're, when you're moving around in squash. The last thing you want is something that's high for you to twist your ankle and fall over. And the second reason that running shoes are not very good is that they have no lateral support. They are really not designed for any type of twisting motion. And you only need to look at modern day running shoes to see that they're almost a, a, a thin canvas. And okay, maybe that's great for running, but it's not good for squash. Um, when I was playing competitively, I always used to use Adidas squash shoes because I found that they fit my feet really well. And that's the next point, that buying a brand should be based on how they fit your feet. These were Salming and they were absolutely fantastic, but they became too old. So I went to Decathlon and I bought these. They're okay, they're 30 euros. The problem was that I needed them immediately, so I had to rush this decision. So my last point to you is, once you've started playing squash and you realize, my God, this is fantastic, I'm definitely gonna keep playing this, which, why wouldn't you? When you find a pair of shoes that are comfortable, go and get a second pair. And I know that not everybody can afford to do that, but what it means is that if you alternate between two pairs of shoes, one, they will last you much longer, and two, if something happens to one pair, you'll have another pair that you can use and then find time to go and get the pair that suits you. So find a pair that is suitable for you and wear these types of shoes, please. If you're fairly new to squash, please consider subscribing and click on the bell so you get notified when I release new episodes. And welcome to the squash community. You're gonna have a lot of fun. This is a playlist of all of the other Squash for Beginner videos. And this is a video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you based on what you've been watching.